welcome back to the Stitch and Witch podcast. This is episode two. Uh, if you are familiar with my channel thus far, but this seems a little bit different for you, that's because here and there when I feel like um, doing so, I dedicate an entire episode, an entire video to my hobby of knitting. But specifically, I also like to talk about how I combine my knitting with my path and my craft as a witch. So I have been sort of thinking about how I wanted to take this channel over, or like this particular uh, endeavor over the next few episodes and things like that. And so I've decided that I'm, I'm going to sort of stick to a structure. This video is going to be broken up into the beginning where I just sort of uh, introduce myself and, and uh, say hello. I will tell you about what I am wearing if I am wearing a knitted good, which I almost always will be when I record these podcasts. Then we will talk about anything that I have finished and gotten off my needles since the last episode. And then we will talk about whips or works in progress. And I will also finish that up with any um, notable yarn acquisitions or things like that if I feel particularly like sharing. If I'm just getting some basic stuff to... Um, you know, do little basic things. Like if I if I acquire a, ba a ball of self-striping sock yarn and I don't think it's anything special, I probably won't talk about it. Um, I, I don't see any point. Uh, but um, if something seems notable, then I will discuss it. Um, so let's dive right in. And um, I just want to say, if you would like to follow along with more of my knitting progress and everything, you can find me on Ravelry as Stellar Tarot, and you can find me on Instagram as Stellar Rain Dancer. So I will put uh, both of the links down below for you. And um, as always, grab yourself uh, a beverage, grab yourself some knitting if you would like to sit and knit with me a little bit and we will head into the first part of this podcast. So what am I wearing today? Today I am wearing the Waiting for Rain Shawl by Sylvia McFadden. She is one of my favorite designers and she is local. I've actually had the pleasure of meeting her in person um, at Knit City a few years ago. This is the second or third pattern by her that I have done. I've also made her Authenticity Shawl, which I adore. I think I've made something else by her too, but I can't remember. Um, her and Caitlin French are two of my like absolute favorite knitwear designers uh, that I happen to also know. So this was knit in a um, uh, the Earl Grey sock company and uh, this is the Darjeeling sock. I cannot for the life of me remember the name of the colorway that I used um, but I will link to my project page down below and um, if I remember, I'll pop the name of the colorway up um, onto the screen here. Uh, I also have a random undyed natural colored uh, yarn, which I used to make the lace insert panels. I wanted to do it in a contrast color to really make them stand out. Um, I did a combination of the regular Waiting for Rain shawl, plus I used the Hacking Your Waiting for Rain um, instructions that came with it. So this did become larger. Um, I did not have very much of the Darjeeling sock left over, if I remember correctly. I finished this a while ago. Um, so that is what I am wearing today over just a simple, basic cotton t-shirt with a leaf Pad, feather pattern on it um, and no bra because it's Saturday and I have been cleaning all day. <laughs> Literally it is, oh what time is it? I can't even see. 
No, I can't even see what time it is. It's the afternoon. I want to say it's probably about 1.30 when I'm sitting down to record this. It is a delightfully rainy and cozy day. I woke up, I had my tea, and I spent a little bit of time in bed playing a game on my phone, and then I got to work. Um, I have done a lot of stuff like some vacuuming, some general tidying, I put all the Halloween decorations away, I vacuumed the stairs, I've done a couple of loads of laundry, I have tidied my room. I still need to vacuum my bedroom, um, but I am waiting for my Roomba to charge so that I can, um, I'm going to vacuum the majority of my room first with our vacuum. And then I'm going to uh, take everything out from under the bed and send the Roomba in under there because one of my cats, Luna, likes to sleep under the bed all the time and um, I do not want her fur to collect under there and just wind itself deeper and deeper into the carpet. She is a long haired cat. So. Um, yeah, that is what I am wearing today. I am also wearing another hand knit. Um, I cannot, <laughs> this is just a simple pair of socks with a self-striping yarn and then uh, some plain gray sock yarn that I had left over from uh, a project for my husband um, in the, uh, uh, as a contrast toe and heel. I have discovered I do not care for short row heels. Uh, I don't find that they grip my um, foot very comfortably. Uh, like my heel, I don't like the way that it feels. So um, now when I do contrasting heels, I just do a heel flap and um, a heel turn and then a traditional gusset. Uh, once I finish the heel turn, I switch back to my um, main color and then I pick up along the sides and I do a gusset. I just, I can't be bothered with um, short row heels. I also really hate the way that short row heels knit up. I don't enjoy the process of doing short row heels and like wrapping and turning and picking them up and blah blah blah. It's a very, to me it feels like a very awkward and cumbersome process. I would much rather pick up stitches um, for a gusset and then decrease if I'm being perfectly honest. At this point in my life I have now knit dozens if not hundreds of pairs of socks. So um, I, I knit them for myself, I knit them for my husband, I have knit some for my kids. Uh, my oldest, Morgan, does not like them. Um, Andrew loves hand-knit socks. Emily is wishy-washy. Sometimes she'll wear them, sometimes she won't. She finds them itchy. I've also knit them for other people in my life, like my mother, who does knit, uh, my father, who doesn't. I have knit them for friends, for co-workers. Um, I have knit them for uh, loved ones when they've been like ill or in the hospital or gone through really difficult times. I knit socks for my uh, mother-in-law when she was alive. Um, yeah, I've knit hundreds of pairs of socks. So at this point, I know what I like and I know what I don't. So I don't actually have any fully finished objects, but I do have one sock finished, so I am going to show it to you. Um, last episode I talked about how I found the absolute perfect pattern for my uh, brother and sister-in-law that I was going to knit them for Christmas. And I showed you the Santa's Garden uh, yarn that I was going to be working with. It is the Sisu Superwash. And the colorway is 2153. So uh, I have finished one sock for Mark. Um, this is going to look a lot better once it's blocked. I don't actually have men's size sock blockers, so I'm going to be borrowing my uh, mother's before I give these away to block these socks out. Um, the the um, background of this pattern is knit in uh, purl stitches, so reverse stockinette, and then the back is knit in stockinette with uh, the cables and then some knit stitches here and there added in to create the contrast and then it is uh, sort of decreased down on the sides uh, as you finish the pattern and then switch to stockinette for the entire foot. I have knit just the first sock. Mark has, he's I think he's 6'2 or 6'3, he's a very tall man. 
um, and he has uh, feet that are 11 and a third inches long, which is unnaturally big. Okay, my husband's feet are like a size 10 and a half. I think they're just over 10 inches, 10 and a half inches, 10 and a quarter inches, something like that. Marks are like at least a full inch longer to knit, so I wanted to do his first and get it over with. Um, I have cast on for the second sock. Um, I'm still in the middle of doing the one by one rib. I've just sort of been neglecting this one a little bit. I did, for the first time, I think that I have ever, ever had this happen in my whole sock knitting career, I had to break into the second ball in the first sock. That never happens for me. I Even when I do my husband's socks, I usually have a little bit of yarn left over if I start off with 100 grams. I'm actually going to have to get another ball of this yarn, which is very irritating, um, but it is what it is. I, I, I will keep the rest of the yarn. I had to do it in the toe. So, you know, like it was, it, the, I think it was in like the second or the third round of the toe is when I had to uh, bring in the new ball. But um, I will have lots of a third ball of yarn left over for doing things like contrast heels and toes or cuffs or whatever on other fingering weight projects. And it is being kept in this uh, TARDIS bag. One of my friends had this uh, TARDIS fabric um, and my mother knit or knit sewed uh, both of us project bags with it. She used a simple navy blue on the inside and then she has this really cool stitching um, feature on her sewing machine so she wrote um, it's bigger on the inside in the embroidery on a little pocket in there which is so cool. Um, she has knit me a f or sewed me a few of these project bags and I really appreciate them. She often does them in uh, prints and things like that that I really like. So technically this is a work in progress but I really wanted to show you that finished sock because I just think it looks so cool. That is the Karia pattern by the way. Again I will link the project page to Ravelry down below so that you can go and take a look at the details of it including where to get your hands on that pattern yourself. Um, something that I made for myself, uh, not out of knitting, but out of uh, herbs that I wildcrafted, but to help me with my knitting is this plantain salve. So I harvested the plantain back in um, early September and then washed it, chopped it, and then made an oil infusion with it, with olive oil in a jar and just put it into my uh, closet and then every time I saw it I would take it out and shake it and then um, on Samhain itself I took the plantain oil out, I strained it through cheesecloth and then I uh, combined it with some melted beeswax and a scoop of uh, coconut oil and this is now a, a salve for my hands for my dry elbows, for whatever. Um, if you are a knitter, you know that having dry hands can be very detrimental for your knitting. The dry patches on your skin and hangnails can catch on yarn, can sometimes pull a ply apart even if it's a really big snag. Um, and it's it smells mostly like the beeswax, uh, but it's really feels really nice. It's very good and healing on the hands. Plantain is known as being a very healing herb, uh, both energetically as well as uh, physically having the, the properties of healing. I'm putting a little bit of it on my neck here too because this portion of my neck can be very sensitive and it can react to things very quickly. Even if I'm not allergic to like wool or the, the soap or whatever, my skin can react anyways. So I always like to put a little bit of it of this stuff um, I've also done things like putting this on uh, the backs of my heels as well as even on my um, kids' elbows and heels and little uh, places that they tend to get um, you know dry skin and stuff like that something else that's in progress is this beer 
It's an oatmeal stout that my husband made. Um, he brews, home brews at home, and actually we're going to have to get another brew going pretty soon because I think either his or mine is starting to run low. But um, yeah, we, we home brew and he's got a little uh, mini fridge he's turned into a kegerator. And he's got a couple of uh, canisters in there with a tank of CO2 and then we can literally just pull beer off the tap. It's We don't have to bottle it. We don't have to worry about any of that stuff. It's a lot simpler. It's a lot faster. And um, we get to enjoy beer year-round um, that he makes from scratch whenever we want. Which, after the amount of cleaning that I did, including like taking old stuff out of the fridge, go me, um, is uh, well-deserved today, I think. I didn't even pour a full one. I just poured like um, just about half a glass or so and uh, that's, that's all I need. That's all I need. So the big thing that is in progress is my Harvest Cardigan. So this is by Tin Can Knits and uh, this sweater started off by uh, knitting a 16 stitch wide band of garter stitch for in my case 125 rows and then it was turned, knit back across and then picked up along the side here and then back across my cast on which was done as a provisional cast on so that I could get live stitches and then knitting back and forth doing raglan increases for the sleeves and for the front until I got the right number of stitches and then it was divided. My sleeves are on some waist bulky weight yarn here. Um, a few stitches were cast on for underneath the arms and I am continuing to do increases along the front every four rows. The yarn that I am using is divine. Um, I was talking last episode about how it was expensive. It is certainly the most that I have ever spent on um, a garment and uh, it probably won't happen again for a very long time but this is the Haiku by Skacel Simply Natural yarn. So the content of this is 40% baby alpaca, 40% fine merino wool, and 20% mulberry silk. So this is entirely, it's non-superwash, it is entirely either um, wool fibers or it's, it's is silk technically considered plant-based or is it considered an animal fiber because it comes from a worm? I've never really been too clear on that. Um, the Each skein is 100 grams and there are 167 meters or for my American friends, 183 yards in every skein. Um, I am making the small medium size of the pattern. I believe Harvest is a free, no, I know it's a free pattern on Ravelry. So hey, I dropped almost $200 Canadian on my sweater, but at least I didn't have to pay for the pattern. Right? Right? <laughs> um, I must say that, oh, by the way, this is the um, colorway number 35, Turkish Coffee. You can see looking at it up close that um, the wool for the most part has dyed dark brown beautifully, uh, but the silk content has come in at a slightly softer, almost like cream colored brown. It is very squishy. It did not grow much when I uh, blocked the swatch and it is knitting up like a dream. My, my mother asked me, did I, was I starting to resent the yarn, um, being a so much stockinette knitting, um, but also uh, just being a plain color and having spent as much as I did on the yarn. And I actually have to say, no, quite the opposite. Every stitch is a dream. I am enjoying every moment of this yarn. I am falling more and more in love with this yarn the the more I go on. I'm actually finding I'm not resenting the amount of money that I spent on it, which can happen if you decide to make yourself uh, a, an expensive garment. You know, you can start, start to feel a little bit resentful towards the yarn for being as expensive as it was and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
but actually I found that it's quite the opposite. I am enjoying this yarn more and more the more I work on it. it. It really is a pleasure. The yarn is beautiful to work with. There's hardly ever any issues of plies separating from each other as I'm knitting it. I'm not splitting my yarn all the time. Um, it spit splices beautifully together so I will have no ends to weave in at the end except for my beginning and end ones um, and I am just I'm in love I'm in love I want to make more out of this simply natural like more projects later on because this is this is truly luxurious and pleasurable in the best way possible um, I did try it on the other night after I had knit um, a few rows, uh, I guess about four inches past um, where I had divided for the sleeves. And I tried it over a t-shirt and a bra, which is what I was sort of planning on wearing it over, either like a th thin blouse or a t-shirt. And um, it fits, when I say perfectly, I mean so perfectly that it is it, it is it is heaven how perfectly it fits. I opted not to put a buttonhole in this uh, in the garter border like the collar and the edging. I did debate it about putting a buttonhole in there and then maybe finding like a beautiful like antler or bone button. However, I like never button up my cardigans like never. I never wear my cardigans or sweaters buttoned. So I do have a couple of beautiful shawl pins and shawl sticks that if I really feel like wearing it closed, I can do that. Or if I feel like I would like to be able to button it at some point, I could also potentially sew on the buttons and then um, sort of uh, make a crocheted button loop off of the edge of the uh, garter border and then use that to uh, hold it together but I significantly doubt that I will want to do that so um, I'm I'm confident in my decision to uh, go button loopless for this particular uh, project um, so the Harvest Cardigan and the Karia Socks, other than my neglected patient shawl, uh, are pretty much the only projects that I have on the go at the moment. Um, uh, I've already spoken last episode about why the patient shawl is kind of sitting in time out for a while, so I won't go over that again. Um, so yeah, that is uh, everything that I am working on at this moment. You will see on my uh, project page if you visit my Ravelry that there's a couple of things that say that they are like um, in progress. There's no photos, uh, but also when you look in the details, it says that they're like completed. And that's because occasionally I do sample knitting for my friend who is the owner of Black Cat Custom Yarn. Her name is Kim. And so I knit a shawl for their uh, shop and for their booth for Knit City that has not yet been photographed. And um, I also knit a couple of hats, matching hats for her and her baby daughter, who um, I finally got pictures of them last week and I was so happy about it. It's a beautiful picture. If I remember, I'm gonna throw it up on the screen right now. Uh, Kim is just an amazing woman. She is a fellow uh, raging geek. Uh, in fact, I think her geekdom goes far beyond mine. She is uh, really involved in a lot of other geekdoms that I am not. Things like animes and other stuff like that that uh, don't really appeal to me personally. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of overlapping uh, interests and things like that. Actually, right now it's very sad. A lot of their colorways are inspired by some of their favorite geekdoms and uh, they got flagged for uh, trademark um, trademark names for a lot of like their Pokemon names and some of their Marvel uh, inspired ones and things like that. So they're in the process of having to rename a lot of their colorways which is so sad. Um, 
like I understand why companies don't want their names being like stolen and trademarked but at the same time like if you're gonna put a um, a creative venture like that out there and people are going to love it and be inspired by it like if they are making a yarn that has the colors of Bulbasaur in it and calling it Bulbasaur like you're not taking away money from the Pokemon franchise because the Pokemon franchise doesn't make yarn <laughs> you know like they're not taking money away from it they are adding to um you know so many ways that people can um sort of uh show off their love of various different things so i think they sort of intend to like um allude to their old names or like reference their old names so that people who are like trying to purchase yarns later on and stuff like that can still find them um but i know it's a very big headache for them and I wish them the best of luck because that is not a process that I would want to be involved in. And I don't envy them right now having to rename all of that stuff. Um, oh, by the way, this project, uh, this Harvest Cardigan is um, being kept in this other project bag that my mother made for me. It's got cardinals on the top which is one of my favorite birds and chickadees for that matter we don't get cardinals here in uh, western bc and then on the bottom is this beautiful um like snowy deer in the forest and um with a little cabin it looks very much like it, um, bob ross painted this this fabric i want a bag in that <laughs> Um, on the inside is this uh, also like a light blue deer fabric, um, very wintry, and there's a simple pocket in there with the contrast fabric. Um, I'm going to have to wind up another ball because uh, that's all I have right now. This is, I'm almost at my second ball of this yarn. And then the whole project I'm keeping in this small reusable uh, basket that I got at a local eco store. Um, because it just makes carrying this around from room to room a lot easier now that the sweater is growing and growing and growing. So a little while ago I was watching uh, Inga from Knitting Traditions and she was showing off this beautiful yarn that she got from a place called Wild in the Woods. And then she mentioned that it was from BC, from Vancouver Island. And that is somewhat close to where I live. I'm about an hour's drive from the ocean. So um, I do actually have family who lives on Vancouver Island. And so I decided I was gonna check out the shop just to see. And that was kind of a mistake because I, I, I did it. I, I fell hard for her stuff. So the thing about Wild in the Woods is that she is another uh, knitter slash crafty witchy person. So I ended up buying a, um, a mystery box. Uh, it was like an autumn mystery box. And so she not only, oh, <laughs> don't show off your address, Jess. Uh, so she uh, hand dyes beautiful yarns in an ecologically friendly fashion. It's all ethically harvested wool and all that kind of stuff. But she also makes a lot of other beautiful things. So um, yeah, there, this stuff, this fragile tape on it was on the box for a reason. So when I opened up the box, the first thing that I saw was uh, this. This beautiful brown paper with this lovely um, pine cone, or sorry, uh, acorn and uh, leaves. It's actually kind of interesting. Those are acorns, but those are definitely pine boughs. So that's interesting. Um, this lovely little stamped card with thank you on it. Um, it also came with this beautiful little... Um, I don't know if this is like an oracle card that she like puts into each, but um, it's this beautiful little image of a sleeping deer in the forest. And then on the back it says, opportunities unfurl like a fern, 
even without warm sunlight. I, like I said, I have no idea if this is like an oracle card from a deck that she just puts one into each or she had some of these printed up. If anyone knows what this is from, please tell me because this is beautiful. And then we get into some of the other really cool stuff. Uh, there were some little miniature uh, spruce cones in here, which obviously she's collected from the forest where she lives uh, on Vancouver Island. There is this beautiful little box. Uh, a lot of these things are like stamped with her stamps. And inside was a bit of moss. This is old man's beard, we like to call it. Um, it's the type of dry moss that hangs off of a lot of uh, trees in the forest. Actually, it's a really good uh, fire starter with your kindling. Um, there is this beautiful quartz crystal. And there was also in there some stitch markers, which I'm actually using currently, or at least some of them, as well as progress keepers. So there was two of these little beautiful gold um, pine cones. And then there was two beautiful progress keepers, which I decided to just add on to my sweater as I knit it, just because one of them is this cute little acorn. And then this one, which is a little spell bottle progress keeper with uh, a couple of, it looks like three or four different types of moss and lichens, which I do recognize from my own uh, walks in the woods. Uh, there was a couple of other um, pine cone ones that were silver and just it's beautiful. So they were all in that little box together. And then it get there there's more. There is a uh, into the woods handcrafted candle, which smells amazing. It smells like pine. It smells like I know this is supposed to be inspired by winter. But to me, or sorry, it's inspired by autumn, but to me this smells a lot more like winter. There's sort of like a, a eucalyptus type scent to it and, and stuff. It's truly beautiful. Uh, there was also this cute little um, muslin bag in there with a couple of stickers, including one of a bracket fungus. Sorry if you can hear my kids goofing around in the background. Um, another little cute mushroom. Um, a little charm of deer antler. Actually, I used the uh, the silver ones of these and the prayer beads that I've made before. So it was really cool to get like the brass type one. And then there's this little um, wildflower bath salts or foot soak with this beautiful little tiny wooden spoon. It's so cute. Sorry, that noise was far too much for me. And uh, the little one should be in her room cleaning anyways. So we've we've broken that little party up. Um, and then finally, the most important part is the yarn and the project bag. So the project bag is this beautiful slice of uh, wood with all the, like the, the tree rings and stuff. And then there are two skeins of fingering weight yarn in here. So the first one is, uh, they're both her folklore um, base, I guess is the, the right way to say it. So this is um, hand dyed in small batches on Vancouver Island. Uh, it's local, sustainable, and natural. It's 100% wool. It's one ply, 400 yards to a 100 gram skein. And this is the shade Lobster Mushroom, which is this beautiful um, sort of rusty color. There is definite bits of organic material in here. But I don't mind. I, I actually really enjoy picking those out as I knit with something. Doesn't smell very sheepy. It just smells like wool. Um, and I love the the dandelion with like the roots and all on the back of the uh, tag. And it's held on with these little, I call them light bulb safety pins because to me they look like the outline of a traditional light bulb. And then the other one is the exact same type of yarn. It's the folklore, but this is called spruce 
needle tea and I will not be able to show you the colorway properly no matter how much I try um, but I'll describe it to you it is a very deep deep uh, black brown uh, pine color a uh, dark green color it's very brown toned warm toned olivey green and it's very deep there's obviously a lot of um, dark dye of some kind in here. Uh, in the wrong light, this just looks black or even dark brown. In the sunlight, you can see the green tone to it. So spruce needle tea just sounds like the perfect explanation for it. It doesn't smell like spruce. Again, it just smells like, uh, like wool. But I imagine in my little witchy head, that um, she was uh, steeping it in dye pots where there was literally like spruce needles held in a muslin bag in there help and, and tea to kind of like help uh, with the actual dye of it. So I don't know if, if um, the ingredients that they are named after are actually in the dye pots helping with the the color. I mean like this could be the color of dye from lobster mushrooms and if that is the case I am even more entranced than I was before and I love this project bag so much. So every little thing that came in that bag is going to get used even including these little spruce cones. These are going on my altar like they're amazing. This little cute little thank you card is going on the, the thing behind me with uh, all sorts of like little bits and, and bobs and stuff like the little oracle card this is going to sit out somewhere probably like right back here where I can see it all the time like I love it I love it one day I want to live in the woods in a little cottage and make half the stuff that I use and like yeah I want all of that in my life right now but I can't because we got kids to raise we have jobs to go do we have school to, to do all that kind of stuff <sighs> one day I will get to be the witch who lives in the woods one day fortunately it's not today so that is everything that I have for yarn acquisitions. Um, I do need to buy another ball of that uh, Sisu by Santa's Garden, um, but I am not going to, I haven't bought it yet. I'm gonna do that this week. So don't count that as well. I'm not even gonna bother counting that as the yarn acquisition in a future episode. You already know that is going to be purchased. I will need it for the project. Um, as soon as I am finished, Mark's Karia socks, I'm gonna make the ones for his. Uh, for my sister-in-law Kim uh, they're 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 not married they're like um they're both going through their divorce proceedings with their exes and um, they're both uh, like they live in the same house so they have for a long time so I guess they're common law spouses here I guess I don't know I call them husband wife boyfriend girlfriend whatever it doesn't really matter significant other partners in life loves of each other's hearts whatever whatever fucking words you want to call it okay <laughs> Um, and now I can finally recycle that box from Wild in the Woods. I've been holding on to that for a couple of weeks in the box. The only things I took out were the stitch markers. I was so proud of myself. So yeah, I have to, um, I actually, you know, can put the stuff away now and uh, get to it. So yeah. Next episode, you're probably going to have me find me talking frantically about Christmas knitting that I want to get done because as per usual, I have planned none of it and will have lots of little ideas that I want to do at the last minute and probably not enough time to do it. Is this the exact same crisis I find myself in every year leading up to Christmas? Yes. Have I ever learned from my mistakes in this process? Obviously, no. So uh, join me next week where, uh, or next time where I will obviously be a little bit panicked and uh, all of it could have been prevented. Such is a knitter's life. <laughs> I hope you guys are all doing really well, that you have been able to get some knitting, crocheting, or even just some cleaning or whatever done in the background while you've been watching and listening to this. And I will see you guys all again in the next episode. Bye.